Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be talking about service dog laws around the world. So let's go! Starting off with USA. The USA goes by the ADA or Americans with Disabilities Act. The USA doesn't have many rules or regulations for service animals, but these are just a few. This is the most important to me because it prevents access issues. So in the U.S., you are allowed to ask two questions, and that is it. There's nothing else you're allowed to ask. These are some tasks that service animals can perform in the U.S., so I'll let you read those. Moving on to Canada, Ontario. Ontario goes by the AODA. Ontario's definition of a service animal is pretty similar to the U.S.'s. A definition of a service animal so basically just a dog that is there that provides tasks for a disability just like the u.s there are very few cases where the law prohibits service animals to be allowed in ontario so just a couple of places so in ontario there's no certificates for service animals however you may be asked to provide a document from a health professional or an attorney card from an Ontario misdemeanor. Canada, Alberta. So Alberta goes by the Alberta Government Service Dog Law. There are eligibility requirements to be a service dog handler, like you have to be 18 years old or have an adult to help you. And there are also re eligibility requirements for the dog to be in a working health condition. Just like the U.S., service dogs can perform a variety of different tasks for a variety of disabilities. So when you get your service dog certified in Alberta, which is not mandatory, by the way, these are what the ID card looks like in Alberta. Just like the U.S. and Ontario, there are very few places where service dogs are not allowed in Alberta, which is just like other laws. Moving on to England and the United Kingdom. I got my information from Assistance Dog UK, which has the laws on it and a couple of other things that I'm going to show you. So you can owner train or program train in the UK, and there are multiple equality acts and disability discrimination acts that protects you and your service dog to go multiple places. There are some training requirements for program train and owner train dogs. However, I thought it was interesting that you can get an ID card, but they are not mandatory, just like Ontario, which I found very interesting because I was not expecting that. Going down to Australia. So Australia goes by the Australian Human Rights Commission. A service dog definition in Australia is pretty close to all the other places in the world, and they can also perform tasks for a variety of disabilities, just like other places in the world, which I found very interesting because I thought some places were exclusive. So the reason why I'm not talking about Australian provinces is there are so many. So here are all of the provinces and their laws regarding service animals, which you can read if you want. I found it interesting that dogs did not need to be trained by a certain program, which I was shocked because I had heard otherwise. Then finishing off strong with New Zealand. The definition of a service dog in New Zealand is pretty self-explanatory. It is a dog that is trained with tasks to mitigate disabilities, which is pretty similar to all of the other laws that we have covered so far in this video. Something about New Zealand that I didn't expect is that there are only eight organizations that you are allowed to get a service dog from, and you cannot owner train. It has to be from one of these eight accredited programs, which is why I see it's so difficult to get a service dog in New Zealand because of this. So in New Zealand, all of the programs are going to certify the dog, so all of the service dogs in New Zealand have to be certified by one of those organizations. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed. 